Luther the 11th, the Sunday after Pentecost, we can enter again in our prayer. And the epistle for this 11th Sunday after Pentecost is taken from St. Paul's first letter, Corinthians chapter 15. Brethren, I make known unto you the gospel which I preach to you, which also you have received, and wherein you stand, by which also you are saved. If you hold fast after what manner I preach unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I deliver unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures, and that he was seen by Cephas, and after that by the eleven. Then was he seen by more than five hundred brethren at once, of whom many remain until this present but some are fallen asleep. After that he was seen by James, then by all the apostles. Last of all, he was seen also by me, as I one born out of due time. For I am the least of the apostles, who am not worthy to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But, but by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace in me hath not been void. And the Gospel in according to St. Mark chapter 7. At that time, Jesus, going out of the coast of Tyre, came by Sidon to the Sea of Galilee, to the midst of the coast of the Capitals. And they bring to him one deaf and dumb, and they besought him that he would lay his hand upon them. And taking him from the multitude apart, he put his fingers into his ears, and spitting, he touched his tongue. And looking up to heaven, he groaned and said to him, Of Feta, that is, be thou opened. And immediately his ears were opened, and the string of his tongue was loosed, and he spoke right. And he charged them that they should tell no man. But the more he charged them, so much the more a great deal did they publish it, and so much the more did they wonder, saying, He hath done all things well. He hath made both the deaf to hear and the dumb to speak. Thus are the words of today's holy gospel. In the middle of this season of Pentecost, it's 11th Sunday, we're in the middle of the battle. You remember the season of Pentecost takes us from the day that our Lord Jesus Christ sent his apostles out to conquer the world, to preach the gospel to every creature, as he says in the Gospel of St. Mark, to every single creature, not only to men, but also to the animals and to the rocks, and to the birds, and to the stars. And that's why we see over the course of the last 2,000 years, God has given power to his apostles, the saints, over all these saints. They have, they have moved mountains, like St. Gregory the Wonder Worker. They have preached to the fishes and preached to the birds, like St. Francis, and St. Anthony and St. Francis. They have stopped earthquakes, and so on and so forth. And they have spoken and shown the power of the gospel over every creature, and not only over men. They have commanded devils to go out from souls, and not been harmed by the attack of the enemy. And he also commanded his apostles to preach the gospel to every nation, teaching them whatsoever I have taught you, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And during these last 2,000 years, the apostles of the church have gone out to teach the nations, Every creature must know about Christ, all men, women, and children, and every animal, and every living and non-living thing, every creature, must know about Christ, must hear about his teaching. And St. Anthony said, why is he to the fishes? He said to the fishes, you have no brains, and yet you know better than the men of the city of Turin, and you are more wise. He preached to the fishes, and so he must preach to all the creatures. But then we must also preach to the nations. The nations have to hear about our Lord Jesus Christ. They have to know about his coming and his, and his, and his kingdom. And they must hear, be all by baptized. They must be cleansed with the water and the Holy Ghost. They have to, have to take the, the world which has been touched by sin, and every part of the world is harmed by sin, and the gospel has to go and purify all this world. And the, and the, and the gospel is preached by the priests of the church and the bishops of the church. To go out and bring that gospel to every creature. 
Now this gospel was carried for 2,000 years. But from whence comes the power of this gospel? We have one very simple, beautiful prayer that now they no longer worry about saying anymore. The bishop says in the, the pontifical mass before he vests, the bishop has special shoes he's supposed to wear because it says in the sacred gospel, the scripture, then blessed are the feet of the preachers of the gospel of peace. And the preachers of the gospel of peace are especially the bishops. So when the bishop puts on his shoes before he goes to the gospel, he says, O oh Lord, I will wrap my feet in the preparation of the gospel of peace, that I might walk in the shadow of thy wings, in the protection of thy wings, remembering the words that the Lord Jesus Christ said on, on Palm Sunday, and the great warning of the Old Testament. Because you remember on Palm Sunday, our Lord Jesus Christ went up into the top of the hill and spoke to all the Jerusalem. He said, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest those that come to thee, how many times would I have gathered thee under my wing like the mother hen gathers her chicks, but thou wouldest not. And here when the bishop puts on his shoes as he goes to do the holy sacrifice of the mass and goes to preach the word of God, he is to remember that he is wearing the sacred shoes of the preparation of the gospel of peace. But where does he walk? And how does he walk safely? And what does he need to fear? He walks in the shadows of the wind of our Lord Jesus Christ. And he must never step out of those shadows. He must never step out from the side of those wings. And St. Augustine says, look at the mother hen. Watch her closely how she walks. And her little chicks walk behind her, and you can see in her walking that she is worried. She's in her walking that she is concerned. And you can see in her walking that her heart goes out to the little chicks that follow her. And so it is with Christ, that wherever Christ walks, little chicks follow. They follow wherever he goes. And here the, 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 we say to the, the bishop of the church, he is supposed to be a leader, he is supposed to be a preacher of the word of God, but where does he go? In the shadow of Christ's wings. He walks in the shadow of the rings. He doesn't need to worry about what special places he must go. Stay in the shadow of the wings. Stay in the protection of the wings of Christ. Because where comes the power of our gospel? It comes only from Jesus Christ. He uses a man to take water and pour it over someone's head. The water goes over the head. But how does the Holy Ghost enter into the soul? The water goes over the head. The priest says the words, I baptize thee in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. He says those words. But how does the Holy Ghost enter the soul? Only directly the Holy Ghost enters the soul, and the priest is only an instrument. And as we remember throughout the history of our church, because every time there have been great battles in the church, God has made it clear that he is the one who gives the victory. He is the one that, that, that brings about the victory of, of, of his kingdom, and that he uses men only as human instruments, and they need to walk in the shadow of his wings. Once a great example of that is in the epistle today, Saul of Tarsus, who was a great enemy of God, who persecuted the church of God, but the grace of God overshadowed him. And the St. Paul said that when he became the Lord or Saul, he said, I am not worthy to be called an apostle because I am the least, because I persecuted the church, and I am the least of the apostles, but... By the grace of God, I am what I am. And thereby he takes away the excuses of all men. But one of the great excuses of our times, I'm not a saint. I'm not a, I'm not a leader in the church. I'm not responsible for these things, whatever's happening in the world today. I'm not the Pope. I can't consecrate Russia. I'm not the bishop. I can't run the diocese. I'm not the pastor of the church. I'm not the head of the family. I'm not the owner of the company. I'm not the guy in charge of sweeping, sweeping the streets. I'm not the one in charge of taking out the trash. Every single thing, someone else is responsible for it. But what does St. Paul say? By the grace of God, I am what I am. God has made all of us responsible for spreading this holy faith. And as we have the miracle of the gospel today, of the man that was deaf and dumb. There was a man that was deaf and he was dumb. He could not hear and he could not speak. But what happened? Christ sighed. He took spittle, put it into his ears. And he instructed, he said, a feta. 
And he instructed his priests to do the same thing. Whenever we have a baptism, we repeat the miracle of Christ that is in the gospel today. The priest takes the saliva and the spittle from his tongue. He puts it in the ears of the child or adult to be baptized. And he says, a feta, which means, be thou opened. And he says the word in Aramaic, the same word language spoken by Christ. And why does he do that? To remind all souls that the priest is Alter Christus. He is another Christ. He will even speak the same language that Christ spoke, the Aramaic language. And he will say, a feta. And when he says, a feta, the ears shall be opened. But then St. Augustine says, why are the ears opened? It is not enough that the ears be opened. The ears are open so that the tongue may be loosed. And it is never enough that the ears be open. For there are many, many souls that open their ears. There are many, many souls that open their ears and hear and believe the truth. For don't forget, not only do the friends of God believe the truth, but the worst enemies of God also believe the truth. Satan hears the gospel. He knows it as well. Satan knows the prophecies about the Antichrist. He knows the prophecies about the victory of the Blessed Virgin Mary. He knows the teaching of Christ well. And he believes it. But his tongue is tied. His tongue is not loosed. His tongue speaks wickedness. His tongue speaks lies. His tongue speaks all manner of deviousness. And he is therefore called the father of lies. The ear that hears the truth does not always speak it. The ear that hears the gospel doesn't always communicate it. And then St. Augustine says, note the difficulty of the miracle. Christ raised so many people from the dead. He was gone. It was very easy for God to drive out devils. He was in a deep sleep and he woke up and there was a great storm, and his apostles were about to die and drown, and in one second he stopped the storm, and they were amazed at him. But on this day, a man is not dead, at least not apparently dead. He's not even completely dumb. He's able to make sounds. He's able to speak something, but indistinctly, and they can't understand what he's saying. And he must sigh, and he must groan. And this is to teach the priests of the church down the next 2,000 years, that if they want souls to be saved, and they want the faith to be spread to the ends of the earth, they must sigh and they must groan. They must all take, take spittle, for there must be something coming from the, the God is, God's church is incarnational. We cannot, so we cannot simply, it means it must be in flesh. His faith in his church must be in flesh. So I cannot simply say, well, God will bring about the miracle, and God will bring about the miracle. God will bring about the conversion of souls. He will bring about baptisms. He will bring about the understanding of the faith. But how does it happen? He requires that we human instruments, first of all, the priests of the church, but also the faithful, must be human instruments in order to communicate the divine truth to our neighbors. Because remember the example of Good Friday. Who was the one that spoke the truth on Good Friday? Who was the one that made sure the truth was known throughout the world on Good Friday so that even on that day, there was not a lack of communication of truth. Our Lord Jesus Christ is the truth. <coughs> there must be someone outside of him, someone other than him who communicates the truth. And on that day, it was a thief who was dying to Christ, who said, this man has done no wrong. We deserve the reward of our crimes, but this man has done no wrong. And this, and remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. The truth was spoken even on Good Friday during the midst of the crucifixion. It was spoken by a thief, but it was spoken. And every word that he spoke was true, and every word that he spoke was inspired by God, and it all reached in perfection. For he said clearly to the whole world down the next 2,000 years, this man has done no wrong, and he is unjustly punished for our sins. But we deserve all punishments that have come his way. We deserve the punishments. And this day, we wish, to, we wish to be remembered when Christ comes into his kingdom. And so the salvation of souls is in the words of St. Dismas. The recognition of the truth of Lord Jesus Christ's innocence is in his words. And it is spoken by a thief. So that even if the apostles tell no man, say that, Saint, reminding them that you all, oh God,